my name is Hallie and welcome to what I assume will be the last installment of my Carusa. It's time for the final door. I hope you're ready. Let's do this. So we have two out of what I presume is three keys. I shot awake, panting heavily, my clothes sticking to my skin due to all the sweat. My eyes darted around the room, but everything was quiet. I seemed to be safe. A nightmare. It seems like I just had a nightmare. But people laughing, distorted faces, and I couldn't remember. But it must have been terrifying. Pulsing pain in my head slowly subsided. I took deep breaths and kept mumbling to myself that it had all been a dream, nothing more. To calming down, I decided to take another look around the house. The fact that no one was here, even though the lights were on, was still nagging at the back of my mind. What I saw when I opened the bedroom door was not what I had expected. Instead of the living room, I'd entered the bedroom through, found myself in the middle of a long hallway. A row of doors, interspersed with handrails, covered each wall. I could hear people chattering in the distance. Where was I? How did I get here? This place looked like a hotel at first glance. A plate with a room number was hanging next to the doors. Mine was 215. As I moved towards the end of the hallway, I took a more thorough look at my surroundings. The floor was lined with red carpet featuring an elaborate design. The red and white walls complemented the elegant atmosphere. On the ceiling hung electrical lamps that were similar in design to candles. As I stepped out of the hallway, I was momentarily blinded by the bright ambience. A huge chandelier was hanging on the ceiling of a grand hall I had stepped into. I seemed to be on the upper floor of this two-floor structure. The ground floor, apparently a restaurant area, was lined with tables. Multiple people were dining and happily chatting with each other. A huge window across from me showed a big body of water. Was I in a hotel by the beach? The water looked oddly close. I needed answers. Quickly, I located the stairs and hurried down towards the restaurant. Luckily, one of the waiters was just passing by as I reached the bottom. Excuse me, could you tell me where I am? He answered without hesitation. In the restaurant area, sir. If you'd like to order something, you need... No, no, I mean this whole hotel. This time he did not hesitate. Well, you're on the Kajimithe cruise ship, that's what you mean. Everything in order. Cruise ship? How did I get on a cruise ship? Have I been kidnapped? Would my kidnappers let me walk around freely? Wait had a concerned look at his face. Glanced over his colleague who had gestured to him with a stern expression on her face. Oh, I could call someone over to help you, or... You could find someone at the help desk just at the end of that hallway. He gestured back up the stairs and pointed at another hallway, next to the one I'd come out of. Thank you, I'll just ask for more information at the help desk. I don't want to hold him up any longer. Waiter's colleague by now had crossed her arms in front of her chest and was tapping her foot impatiently. The waiter hesitantly nodded and turned away from me. Cruise ship? I didn't even remember ever booking a ticket for a cruise. As I rummaged through my pockets, I did find a key card with the number 215 on it. Right, the help desk. I should be able to find out more there. I made my way back up the stairs. The room at the end of the second hallway looked like a lounge area. It was filled with comfortable sofas and armchairs. Multiple groups of people were ch chatting to each other. I could see children playing near what I assumed to be a help desk. I quickly approached the man standing at the desk who perked up from the documents he was browsing. Hi, how can I help you? I'm a bit lost. Well, I don't really remember booking a cruise. It's is there a way to get off early? He looked at me with a similarly puzzled expression as the waiter. Um, could you tell me your room number? Yes, it's 215, but I don't really remember booking it. I took out my keycard and showed it to him. The man opened a drawer and started expertly flipping through folders. Shortly after, he pulled out a document. Is this your name and signature? He turned it so that I could see it. To my surprise, the name and signature written on it were indeed mine. But how? How could I forget signing up for a cruise? As for your second question, we're currently on the last day of our trip. The ship will 
arrive at the Kejimithe port tomorrow at noon. Are you here with anyone? He threw a skeptical look my way. I must have sounded like a weirdo. No, I'm alone. I'll just... Sort things out tomorrow, then. The employee shrugged and put the folder back into the drawer. Don't hesitate to let me know if you need any more help. I turned around, wondering what my next course of action could be when... Ow! Someone had hit, had hit one of my legs hard. I stumbled managed to stop myself falling by holding onto the help desk. Oh god, are you okay? Lanny, you need to pay more attention. I looked to see what had hit me. Initially, I'd assumed that I'd walked in some piece of furniture, but it wasn't a case. A boy was sitting on the ground in front of me. Someone was standing over him, making sure that he was alright. As soon as she confirmed he wasn't hurt, she turned to me. I'm very sorry about that. Are you hurt anywhere? Lanny, make sure to apologise. Sorry I wasn't looking. No, no, it's alright, I'm okay. Turn to the boy named Lanny. This isn't going to go well for Lanny. Are you okay? Yeah, it's nothing. His look was fixed to the ground. It seemed like he really did feel bad about bumping into me. The woman had in the meanwhile fixed her gaze onto my face. Are you sure you're alright? You look rather pale. No, I'm fine. That didn't seem to convince her. My confusion and frustration about being on this boat had shown in my face. Would you like to sit down with us for a bit? I have some medicine against the seasickness, it may help. Now that she was mentioning it, I, f I did feel a little woozy. I'd been too preoccupied with figuring out what was going on to notice. She led me to one of the sofas and motioned for me to sit down. My name is Sabrina, by the way. This boy here is Lanny, and the girl over there is Amy. She motioned to a girl sitting at a table who was nearby brooding over a piece of paper. My name is Scott, so are they your family? Sabrina stopped rubbing in through her handbag and looked at me with a amused smile on her face. Oh no, they're my neighbour's kids. We're a good friend and I paint with the children sometimes. Currently looking after them. While Sabrina was still looking for the medicine, Lanny approached his sister and peered over her shoulder. He then grimaced and walked over to our shoulder to take a seat next to Sabrina. Here you go. Hand me a pill from a small bottle. In the corner of my eyes, I saw Lanny motion to Amy. I don't get how she can be so into drawing, it's boring. I've been at it for at least half an hour, it still looks terrible. Hey, I heard that. Amy shot an angry gaze at Lanny. Good art needs time. Maybe you should work on some art as well. Yeah, maybe it'd help with your hyperactivity. I'm not hyperactive. It sounds like that's what Dad says. I guess so. If I had any actual knowledge about music, it could help you relieve your energy that way at least. But it's also been a while since my art. Sabrina trailed off with a sad look on her face. Don't worry. It's okay. I can figure things out on my own. When asking Dad and Mum can they buy me a melodica, pretty sure that I'll get one soon. You two really seem to have a knack for art and music. Your parents must be very proud of you. Don't know about Amy, but I'm pretty sure they're proud of me. Amy shot another angry glance Lanny's way, but didn't retort. She seemed to be the mature one of the sibling relationship. Hey, do you have any more of those pills? I jumped slightly. A voice had called out right behind me. As I turned around, I saw a grumpy looking man. Sabrina grabbing a handbag once again. Another one, Frederick? It says on the package that one should be enough. Hmm. Apparently not. Can't work what I feel like crap. Why did I agree to go on this trip? Sabrina gave him a sceptical look but handed him a pill without saying anything. Frederick turned around on the spot and trotted off. Sabrina sighed. Sorry about that. It's usually more pleasant. The seasickness must be getting to him. That coupled with an upcoming deadline for an article? So he's a journalist? No, no, that's not what I meant. He's a biologist. He's been working hard on getting something published in that one magazine. He asked me his obsession with getting more publications is a bit unhealthy. Fellow scientist? Now that I thought about it, I hadn't written anything myself in a while. Way more pressing matters had taken up my time recently. The spores were still. I jolted up. Sabrina looked at me in surprise. Thank you for the medicine. I feel better now. I should get going though. I was too anxious to sit still. Even though I knew there was nothing I could do till the ship came in support the next day. Alright, take care. Feel free to let me know if you need any more medicine. I thanked her again, said goodbye to the siblings and headed back towards the sleeping quarters. But I stopped just before the hallway that led to my room. My eyes wandered towards the big window. The sun had started to set, but I didn't feel tired at all. Likely because I'd just woken up recently. But I decided that the best way to dispel some of my anxiety was taking some fresh air. I continued on past the hallway and out onto the deck. A salty breeze hit my face. I could hear the soft splashing of waves against the hull of the ship. The place was way emptier than I expected. Less than a handful of couples and some families were standing near the edge of the railing. One of the couples had the dog with them. Every now and then, when it heard the call of a seagull, it jerked its head around. 
but one of the pairs on this deck, perhaps Amy and Lanny's parents? Absent-mindedly, I approach the railing right by the door and looks over. We were very high up. Looking down at the waves hitting the ship hull had an eerily hypnotic effect. Combined with the cool air and the sound of water, it calmed me down. Hey! I jerked up. Someone was standing at the railing right next to me. Sorry, I didn't mean to surprise you. No worries, it's okay. Well, actually, you've been standing there for a while. Did I somehow overlook her? You look a bit confused, so I wanted to ask if you're alright. Well, I guess I'm a bit lost. I had a feeling she'd be no more understanding than the employee, so I decided not to tell her too much. I'm a bit lost too. It might sound weird, but I'm not sure how I ended up here. Wait, it sounded oddly familiar to my situation. She seemed to misinterpret my surprised look. I know, it's, it sounds odd, it's just like in dreams. Whenever you try and remember how you got to the place you're dreaming about, you can't. So I wasn't the only one. There was someone here who was experiencing the same thing I was. Knowing this lifted my spirits. Just as I was about to tell her about my situation, she suddenly perked up. Sorry, I should go. I promised to meet someone. With that, she hurried off before I could say anything. I was slightly frustrated by the fact I hadn't been able to confide in her. But I could seek her out tomorrow, I guess. The sun had almost set. A blood red stripe was visible on the horizon. I set off back towards my room. That was obviously May. With nothing better to do, I got into bed and tried to sleep. My night was restless. Half of the time, I wasn't sure if I was awake or asleep. Weird sounds kept waking me. By the time the sun had risen, I felt like I'd barely slept at all. Today would be the day that we'd arrive at a place called Gejimiti. So do you think maybe the story goes right to left? From there, I would be able to get back home one way or another. I rubbed my eyes as I opened the door that led out into the hallway, but something was wrong. The hallway looked different. Was it shorter? There definitely used to be more doors here. It's as if a new wall and door had appeared where the hallway originally continued into the restaurant area. I approached the new door and tried to turn the doorknob, but it was locked. Slowly, panic set in. Was I trapped in here? Did everyone already leave? There's no way they'd left me behind, right? I quickly approached one of the doors in the hallway and knocked. Silence. I tried the next and the third door was silent. My heart rate accelerated. I forced myself to calm down and think this through. There was no way they would leave a passenger behind, and even if they did, they would notice sooner or later if I was still in here. The most reductive thing to do right now would be to check if the other rooms were open. Maybe I could find a way to make people aware of the fact I was still in here. Consider which door to try first. Which room should I go into? The room was unfurnished and windowless. A sole light bulb in the middle of the ceiling illuminated it faintly. I could see about 15 people sitting on the dirty ground. Most of them seemed to be adults, but there were a couple of children carrying what I assumed to be the parents. One person from the group, an older man, raised his head as if waking from a dream. The door! It's open! More and more people lifted their head and I could feel the stirs piercing me. The man was the first to stand up and shuffle towards the door. He stepped aside, but as he tried to cross the threshold, he suddenly stopped. He was frozen in midair. His fingers tightened as if he was exerting great effort. Disappointed, he stepped back. It's no use. He sculpted back to his spot and slumped to the floor. The other people in the room lowered their help. Their hopes dashed in an instant. I wasn't sure what was going on, but it was evident they were in trouble. I quickly walked up to the older man. Hey, do you know what's going on here? No. We all woke up in this room and unable to leave. Now it seems like you're stuck with us as well. My heart stopped for a second and panic slowly started to set in. Was I really trapped in here? I hastily walked to the door and stepped right through. The man stared at me with wide eyes. This means that you instead of the girl might be able to help us. Right after he uttered those words, some of the people in the room lifted their heads and looked at me. Some would look at disbelief, some with hope in their eyes. So there was someone else in this ship who could enter and exit this room freely? What did she look like? I started explaining, and I soon realised the description fit someone I already knew. It sounded just like the girl I'd met on the deck yesterday, so she got in this mess as well. We asked for her to help us, but she just laughed and left. It wasn't quite how I remembered her, but it wasn't like I'd known her for a long time. Was her nice appearance just an act? I shifted my attention back to the man before me. There may be people behind the other doors that we could possibly help. Please let me know if you have anything you don't need or if you're in need of something. That way I can make sure that everyone gets out of here safely. Some people nodded in agreement while the majority stayed stoic. A woman got up and got something from a shelf and approached me. I found some medicine in this room. Can't give away all of it, but maybe it'll help someone. The label was barely legible. I could make out the letters, fun, eight. 
Still gladly took the bottle and thanked her, she trotted back. Please, if you find any food, bring it to us. Alright, I should head out, but I'll let you know if I find anything. With these words, I stepped back through the door, closed behind me as if a wind gust had suddenly blown through the hallway. The door creaked open and lights spilled into the damp room. A crowd of about 40 people occupied the space. Some were sitting on the floor and some were leaning against the dirty walls. Suddenly someone near the door darted up and shoved me aside. It was Frederick, who I'd met only briefly while chatting with Sabrina. He tried to force himself through the door but it was stopped mid-air. The visible force was pushing him back. Some more people approached the door and tried the same but to no avail. Damn it! Frederick slammed his fist into the wall. I thought this was my chance. Frustrated, he went back to where he was originally sitting. Since I'd been in a room like this before, I knew that I was able to travel back and forth. Hey, um... A few people looked up as I started speaking. I should be able to walk in and out. There are also survivors in the other rooms. I might be able to get you some things if you need anything specific. Frederick shut up and walked to me until he was way too close for comfort. We need food, you'll get some for us, right? Said I'm more like a threat than a request. I can do that if I find some. I stepped back so I didn't have to smell his sour sweat anymore. Happen to have anything in here you don't need? Just in case the other people in the ship need anything specific. Look at you if I had just made a joke. What, no. Even if you had anything, we wouldn't just be giving it away. I looked at him sceptically. Alright, alright, I know what you want. I have a gun with me. If you bring me food, I'll trade it for the gun. A gun? I'd never used a firearm before. I wasn't sure how a gun would help me in this situation. Hesitantly, I agreed to escape Frederick's impatient gaze. Maybe it would come in handy after all. You'll have to make sure to food share food with the others. Alright, whatever, just give us something, alright? I don't have anything with me right now, sorry. Get the hell out of here and find something. He shouted at me and shoved me out of the room. I tripped and fell to the floor as he slammed the door shut in front of my face. The guy was a huge jackass. But I still felt bad for the other people in the room. I'd have to go back there eventually if I wanted to help them. I dusted myself off and turned towards the other doors. I entered the dimly lit room. It was desolate except for a few cans of food and a few water bottles in one of the corners. There were also two rather young children, one boy and one girl in the middle of the room. I saw the girl kneeling over the boy's motionless body and my heart dropped. It was Amy and Lanny. She looked at me with pleading eyes as I rushed to her side. Lanny was covered in sweat, indicating a heavy fever. His limbs were heavily bruised and he was heaving. I glanced over at Amy. Fortunately, she seemed to be alright. Scott, we met yesterday. You're Amy, right? Yeah. Her voice was shaking. Lanny is sick. Don't worry, Amy. We'll find a way to help him. She hesitantly nodded. That seemed to calm her down a bit. I had some medicine on me. At least that's what the woman who gave it to me called it. I couldn't really read the label. Should I give it to Lanny? If Lanny dies now, I'm so sorry. It seemed like he would die if nothing was done. I decided to take the risk and administer the medicine to him. He has a medicine with me. He should be alright in no time if he takes this. I sounded more confident than I actually was in the hopes of cheering Amy up. I made sure he was conscious enough to drink it and then carefully lifted his head, put the bottle to his mouth. I slowly cupped it down and I set his head back down. Will he be okay now? I think so. It will take some time for the medicine to take effect. All it was left to do is hope that what I gave him would help against his fever. I seem to have some food and water here. I think I could take some of it with me. More people are trapped here and they don't seem to have any. I don't mind. Thank you. She didn't seem very talkative. That was to be expected considering how concerned about her brother she must be. I'll let you know once I find something that can help you, okay? Okay. Turn back towards her brother. I walked by the canned food considering taking some with me. Both rooms need it. I'm going to take it for both rooms. I decided to take all of it with me. They'd be fine for a bit without it and this would give me trading leverage. But I couldn't help feeling terrible even if my decision seemed logical to me. I left the room and found me back in the hallway. The room seemed empty except for a lonely light bulb hanging from the ceiling. It didn't seem to be working properly as it barely gave off any light and flickered every now and then. It took my eyes a while to get adjusted to the darkness. And right as they did I realised the room wasn't actually as empty as I thought. A huge dog I hadn't seen right away because the poor light was just a few feet in front of me. It was determined to rip me to pieces. I hastily stumbled backwards almost tripping. This was it I thought I was going to get mauled. But nothing happened. All I could hear was the rattling of a chain. So I opened my eyes and saw that the dog was fortunately chained to the wall to prepare its red collar, vehemently struggling to get free. After confirming that there was indeed no risk of getting free, I took a close look around the room. There were small glittering objects strewn across the ground next to the animal. Next to where the dog was, a body, a badly mutilated one. 
Foul feelings riding through my stomach. Could the dog do this? The corpse was lying way too close to the dog to examine it. Instead, I cautiously inched to the object scattered on the ground next to it. Picked one up and examined it. It was a bullet. I had no use for the bullet yet, but if I did in the future, I knew where to find one. When I took another close area to the wall, close look at the area behind the dog, I saw there was an opening in the wall. It seemed to lead into another section of the ship. The first time since getting trapped here that I'd seen a possible escape route. The only problem was the furious and unblocking it. I couldn't think of a way to get around the dog without getting mauled. And so I decided to retreat for now and look for a way to get past it without getting myself in danger. Suddenly I felt the floor beneath me vibrate with increasing intensity. What was happening? An earthquake? The intensity of the rumbling increased and soon I was thrown from side to side. I struggled to, to stabilise myself but ultimately failed. My back hit a wall hard and I fell to the ground. I rolled into a ball trying to protect my head as I slid along the floor. The sound of metal breaking apart filled my ears. It was deafening. And then I stopped. Just as suddenly as it started. I stayed in fetal position for a while longer fearing that everything would start shaking again. But it seemed like it was finally over. Were the people inside the room all right? Have we perhaps run ashore? Would someone come and rescue us now that we were on land? A myriad of questions filled my mind. My eyes fell on the locked door to the hallway. Something about it was off. It was barely noticeable, but it seemed like the door was slightly skewed. I quickly approached it, turned the door on up and pulled on it. It was still stuck, but I did feel like I would be able to pry it open with more force. So I tugged again and again, each time the door inching more and more open until. The door flew open and I was thrown back. A strong gust of wind hit my face. I reflexively closed my eyes. I celebrated internally. Finally, I'd be able to get you out of here and look for help. Finally, this nightmare would help. But I was mistaken. What I expected to see beyond the door was the hall in the restaurant from the day before. But my expectations were utterly betrayed. The ocean. A huge body of water was in the distance. As I looked down, I saw we were 100 metres above ground. How? How were we moving on land? What shocked me the most was that I could make out thin, long legs supporting the ship. The movements were so smooth that it felt like we were floating. It was as if I was inside something that was alive. My eyes wandered across the rest of the ship below me. It must have broken in half. The form of the tear was quite odd, though looked like a huge bite mark, as if something even bigger than the cruise ship had ripped into it. But that couldn't be true. There was no animal big enough that could have been off such a huge chunk of the ship. As the creature I was on made a sharp turn, the ocean drifted out of view. My grip on the doorframe tightened. I feared I would be thrown off. And then it stopped. My eyes widened in shock as I saw the scene before me. The view was surreal. One single town was standing in the middle of a wasteland. Wandering through that wasteland were enormous outlandish creatures amongst giant mushrooms. They looked like something straight out of a nightmare. I wiped my eyes trying to dispel the illusion before me but it wouldn't go away. My breathing became ragged and my chest contracted painfully. I had to accept this as my reality. In a trance I stepped away from the doorframe. A wave of rage overcame me as I lashed out and kicked the wall. Dull pain spread throughout my foot, but I barely noticed it. Tears started to well up in my eyes. Is there even any reason for me to go on? Why shouldn't I go? just go back to my room, lie down and stay there? I leaned against the wall and stared at the ceiling. My feet were shaking. But I was finally starting to calm down. I knew that getting angry wouldn't help. What I was seeing wasn't logical in any way. It went against everything I knew. I was a scientist, and not being able to understand this place frustrated me. Above all, it scared me. Giving up wasn't the right thing to do. It wasn't the logical choice, but I really wanted this nightmare to end. I'd escape sooner or later and get myself into a better position eventually. This is what I hoped, at least. The ship may still be suspended high above the ground, but there must be some ways to get down. I would figure out what to do next once I was out of here. I closed the door and slowly let my eyes drift over the four doors in front of me. I entered the room for a second time. Even though I hadn't been away for that long, everything seemed different. The faces of the people here had darkened considerably. I spotted the old man I had talked to not long ago and approached him. But he didn't even look up as I greeted him. He just sat there with a blank expression on his face, not even moving an inch. Hey, is everything okay? No response. As I looked around, I noticed that none of the others had moved from the spot. Nor had any of them looked up since I entered the room. 
We tried to talk to them, but they wouldn't respond. It was as if they'd suddenly turned into statues. Their eyes were devoid of any signs of life. I tried shaking them awake, but they didn't react. Hello? Can anyone hear me? I cried out into the room in desperation, but my words echoed back emptily. What's going on? What happened to them? Even though I was surrounded by people, I felt alone. Hmm? I jerked my head around, scanned the dim room with my eyes until I finally saw something in one of the corners move ever so slightly. My heart started to race as I stepped closer. I couldn't quite make out what had made the sound, but it probably a human, right? Ugh. It made it a gurgling sound and I hesitated for a bit. Horrific images of all kind of creatures popped into my mind. I shook my head and tried to get them out of my head. After a few more cautious steps, I was finally close enough to see it. It was a girl. It wasn't just a girl. It was the same girl that had run in from the deck. Her body was limp. But as opposed to the other people in this room, she seemed more or less conscious. I cautiously picked her up and made my way towards the door. Words of the old man echoed in my ear. Told me she was able to pass through the door just like I was. Why hadn't she left the room by herself? Something happened that she got caught up in. How did she get in here anyway? I would have noticed her in the hallway. I turned towards my room. I had a bed and she'd probably be safe there. Opening the door while carrying a person was no easy feat. But I finally succeeded and put her on the bed. Ugh, home? My facial expression changed from one to pain to one of relaxation. She instantly fell asleep. I debated whether I should wake up and try and get some information out of her. It didn't seem like she was in any condition to answer questions. Seeing her sleep so soundly made me want to take a break as well. I pushed myself to step out of the room and back into the hallway. I need to see if there was any way to get out of here. The first thing I did after entering the room was taking a quick glance to see if Frederick was nearby. To my detriment, he was. He jumped up as soon as he called me coming. Hey, did you bring anything useful with you? He didn't even offer so much as a greeting. I do you have food on me? Maybe I could trade it for the weapon. Yes. Decided to give the food to Frederick. Probably a good idea to have a weapon with me in case I run into something out there. I have some food with me. I can give it to you and you can share it with the others. Frederick took a quick look around to make sure no one was watching. Then he took a gun from his pocket. Here, take it quickly. Don't tell anyone you gave me this, okay? I was definitely not okay with keeping the food a secret and about to protest. But he'd already taken the food and shoved me out the door into the hallway. I threw the gun at my feet and slammed the door shut. What a jerk, I thought. At least I had the gun now. Never really used one before. I've seen my fair share of crime movies, but I was certain it would work out somehow. How hard could shooting a gun be, right? I checked the magazine to the bullets were in it. It was empty. Of course it was empty. That's why he handed it over so easily. Otherwise, he could have threatened me with it instead of trading it in. How could I have been fooled this easily? Frustrated, I pull it away and turn towards the other doors. I was worried about these two. All kind of terrible scenarios had gone into my head. I glanced around the room. They fortunately seemed to still be more or less okay. I've given Lanny some medicine, so he should be doing a lot better. How was your brother feeling? And he did seem more calmer than last time. His head doesn't feel as hot anymore. He's been sleeping for a long time, though. For a second, I considered the worst. But his pulse was fortunately still there. He did seem to be in a better state, and I was hopeful that he would get up soon with enough rest. How about you, Amy? Are you holding up all right? Yeah, I think so. But I'm kind of hungry. Food we had will soon be gone. Hope that we can get out of this here soon. As I don't, maybe we'll die. I, I dodged her gaze and fixed my eyes at the corner of the room. I should get going again. We'll come back soon to check on you two. Okay, I hope you won't have to be away for so long again. Long? I hadn't been out for that long. It's understandable that she didn't want to be left all alone. She was likely exaggerating. I left the room and found myself back in the hallway. As I entered the room, the dog instantly started barking and tugging on its chain. The hole in the wall behind it still seemed to be the only way out of this part of the ship. Once again, I went through my options to see what I could do to get past it. I'm gonna save here because I have a feeling we're about to make a decision. <laughs> I had a gun and there were bullets next to the dog. Attack the dog using the gun. I quickly snatched up some of the bullets that were lying near the dog and loaded the gun. It felt rather heavy in my hands as I pointed it towards the creature. The dog stopped barking, he was glaring at me with mad eyes, as if he knew what this object in my hands was for. My breath was getting heavier. My heartbeat accelerated. My finger twitched and... 
sudden silence engulfed me. It was soon replaced by a high-pitched sound. I instinctively closed my eyes and I slowly opened them. A red puddle started tainting the area around the dog's corpse. I looked at the gun in my hand and a wave of disgust engulfed me. I forcibly threw it into the corner of the room and immediately I'd started regretting what I'd done to the animal. Cautiously, I stepped over and watched it. I wanted to confirm whether it was really dead. Its body lay on the ground motionless. It was truly dead, without a doubt. I stepped over it and walked towards the wall. What I'd done it weighed heavily on my conscience. I stared into the hole. The hole stared back. Before I let others know, I had to make sure that whatever on the other side was safe. The hole was rather small and I had trouble fitting through, but I succeeded eventually. After a while, I noticed something was off. The hole slightly seemed to go on for longer than it should have. I expected to have already come out in another part of the ship, but it just went on and on. And then suddenly, a wave of tea came over me as if I'd stepped into a veil. The air had gotten heavier and my breathing became more ragged. I clutched my chest as I tried to figure out what was going on. Throbbing pain pulsed through my arm. It was as if something had stabbed me. I had to turn around, but I'd already become too weak. My feet gave in and my vision darkened. I could feel a presence near me. Before I could figure out who it was, my consciousness faded. Okay. How many times does this make now? What's this? Never thought his presence would make such a huge difference. Seems like his use is nearing its end. I need to keep him around then. I wonder how long it'll take until I find another one. Hmm. Then it end like this would be quite boring though. And he did interact with it quite a lot. Maybe I should do one last experiment. I'll send him off with a bang. He deserves it for helping me so much. Alright, time to go make preparations. What, what was that? My head felt like it was splitting open. What was I doing? I'd seen something, a nightmare. No, it had been real, hadn't it? The pain was nearly unbearable. Images that seemed to have no relation to each other flashed in my mind. A plant, a dark room full of people, distorted faces and an ocean. Two children, a blood trail, a pack of cats, a knife, pain. My head felt like it was about to burst and then it was over. The pain was gone. I steadied myself. The images I had seen were the hallucinations or were they memory? My mind was all jumbled up. I called out as I left the bedroom, but no one answered. I'm actually going to save here. I think I'm going to go back to the previous story and because we haven't got a key or anything. So I feel like we're missing something. I think that's the wave here. Deal? Let's do this. I'm not killing my dog. This might be a bad idea. I didn't feel too enthusiastic about the prospect of killing an animal. Also, I've never handled a gun before. Maybe I could find another way to get past it. In the end, I couldn't think of any way to get around it. And so I had no other choice but to simply retreat once again. I froze the moment I entered the room. I had seen some movement out of the corner of my eye. But when I turned my head, it was a blank wall. As I stepped further in, I noticed a scratching sound. It was as if something was clawing at the wall, but I couldn't make out anything that could have been causing it. There was barely any movement at all. Everyone seemed to be frozen in place. I stood in the door frame and strained my ears. It was getting louder. I considered leaving, but curiosity overcame me slowly. I stepped into the room. It was then I saw someone who seemed to still be awake. The slight twitching was barely noticeable in the dim light. I was calling out to them, but something told me not to, and so I cautiously inched towards them. But the closer I got, the more apparent it became that something was off. I froze. The hair. At least she got a funny face. Ha! Huh? It almost looked as if the face was melting off the bones. The eyes were dark and hollow. I took a few hasty steps back, but they fortunately didn't seem to react to my presence at all. Scratching seemed to have gotten louder. I noticed something lying on the floor not too far away from the person I'd just checked on. I hesitated. My fearful glances were answered with complete silence and lack of any movement. I was still safe, probably. I shifted towards the thing in the ground and slowly picked it up. It was a sheet of paper that looked like it was ripped from a diary or a log. 
If I was the leader of this operation, I'd fire anyone who let ethics get in the way. Sacrifices always need to be made to ensure humanity's future. I guess it doesn't really matter. I'll just consider my research in private since it's not like there isn't enough subjects inside the zone. Couldn't make heads or tails of this note. I was missing too much context. Scratching got even louder. Something was definitely not right here. I should probably get out of here. I let my eyes wander over the room one last time and made my way back outside. I heard a big ruckus coming from behind the door as I opened it. This startled me and I almost slammed the door back shut. How did I not hear this commotion out in the hallway? People were screaming, punching, kicking and pulling each other's hair. Others were smashing other people's heads against the wall. Everyone was doing their best to kill and not be killed. It was a horrible scene. As I stood there dumbfounded, I quickly realised what this was all about. People were fighting over food. Instead of sharing it, they decided to fight each other for it. Soon, I couldn't differentiate dead from alive as everyone was covered in blood. I watched in horror. Suddenly, a brawling pair came dangerously close to me. I tried to dodge, but my back hit the door frame and I was pushed out of the room as they slammed against me. I didn't think they even saw me, but they were too immersed in their fight. It seemed like food shortages had driven them to insanity. The door slammed shut and I was left alone in the once again quiet hallway. Hesitantly, I debated about whether or not I should go back into the room and try and break up the fight. I was just about to greet Amy, but then I realised she wasn't kneeling in her usual spot. My heart began to race and I started to assume the worst. I walked towards the middle of the room where her brother was lying. My eyes were still adjusting to the weak lighting. And there she was, lying next to him. They both looked famished as if they hadn't eaten at least a week. How could this be? I wasn't gone this long. Something must have happened when I wasn't here. I shouldn't have left them alone. Then all of this wouldn't have. I could have stopped whatever did this to them. But it was too late. I approached them and checked both of their pulses. Nothing. I staggered backwards. There was nothing I could do with them anymore. With a heavy heart, I stumbled out of the room. Which room should I go into? I couldn't bring myself to open the door. Just like the last time, the dog instantly started barking. But one thing was different. Its bark seemed weaker than before. I slowly approached the part of the room where it was chained, but all I saw was a miserable creature. It was weakly lying on the ground, only able to bark and growl at me. I had no idea what caused it to become like this, considering I hadn't been gone for that long. This might be my chance, I thought to myself. But as I approached the hole, the dog managed to snatch at me, almost bit me. Apparently it was still capable of hurting me in the state. I had a gun and there was bullets next to the dog. Attack the dog using the gun? Nope. I'm not doing that again. I never want to do that again. I grabbed the door handle, but I remember what I experienced last time I was in this room. Was it really a good idea to go back in? But technically my life hadn't been in any danger. Maybe I should check the room just in case. But I'd stay in the door frame. It wasn't like anything besides me could leave this room anyway. The door slowly cracked open, and I glanced inside the room. The people that were here were gone. The room was completely empty, and their place was a black substance. Was that blood? That, then the scratching started seemed to be coming from every direction at once. I tried to make out its source and noticed something at the far end of the room. There were ripples on the wall. Almost looked like the wall was made out of water. Slowly something started to push itself through with a thick, liquid-like texture. First it was a single hand. Then more and more arms started to appear. All of them grasped at empty air. All of the scratching was getting louder and louder. I tried to shield my ears with my hands. My instincts told me to run, but I was frozen in place. I couldn't avert my eyes from the scene before me. Slowly, feet started to reach through the wall, and then finally the whole body was free. The scratching had stopped. I recognised the clothes of some of the creatures in front of me. These were the people who had been trapped in this room. But their heads, they weren't human anymore. The faces were distorted beyond recognition. As I stared at them in disbelief, I noticed none of them were moving. They were just staring at me. Then one of them slowly lifted the arm, grasping at the air and slowly started to walk towards me. It's almost as if it was pleading. Then the others followed suit. I started to feel a mixture of terror and pity, but as they got closer and closer, my terror grew stronger and stronger. What would they do when they reached me? They definitely weren't human anymore. Were they about to attack me? My head began to spin and I took a few hasty steps back, almost tripping on my way out of the room. There was nothing I could do for them. It was too late. 
But only I could have found a way out before they turned into that. Frustrated and with a heavy heart, I slammed the door shut. I felt uneasy about entering this room, but I had to find out what happened to everyone in here. With a foul feeling in my stomach, I stepped over the threshold. But I saw it was way worse than anything I could have imagined. The stench was overwhelming. Forty lifeless body, blood-covered bodies were laying in the floor. Somehow they'd already started decomposing, even though they, I hadn't been gone for that long. The smell was enough to make me vomit, and I knew if I stayed any longer I would. I had to see if there were any survivors. I slowly made my way to the middle of the room to get a better look at the situation. Then the worst happened. I stepped onto something soft and wet. My foot sunk it and my sock was soaked. My body froze. Slowly my eyes wandered to the ground. My foot was stuck in the torso of one of the dead bodies. Almost in a panic, I turned around and stumbled out the door. When I got back into the hallway, I gasped at her and did my breast to suppress my gagging and tears. It took me a while to get myself back together. I couldn't believe what I'd just seen in my room. It all felt like a nightmare. I knew I had to move on. They're gone. They're gone. They were all dead. They're gone. I guess we I guess we go to the dog. An unexplainable feeling overcame me, a feeling that this was a point of no return. Should I really enter? We know we die in there. So let's make a safe state. <laughs> so I entered the room, I instantly felt something was off. There was no barking. As soon as my eyes got accustomed to the darkness, I saw why. The dog was dead. It was lying on the ground in front of the hole in the wall, motionless. Its tongue was hanging out of its mouth. As I stepped closer to confirm it was truly dead, I picked up a faint, foul stench. I cautiously poked it, but there was no reaction. It was definitely dead. Somehow it died without any apparent reason. I felt bad for it. Now I could finally walk past without being afraid of being bitten. Slowly, while trying not to step on it, I approached the hole. Stared into the hole, the hole stared back. Before I let the others know, I had to make sure that was on the other side was safe. We knew. We knew. <sighs> Can I not go back to the girl? I have no choice. Down this route, there's only death. <sighs> I guess we need to go back and make some better decisions. So I've made a save at the first start of the rooms. And we're gonna see what happens if we don't interfere with any of the rooms, we're gonna do them all one at a time. This room should be exactly the same as we start. This room is vanished and windless. A sole light bulb in the middle of the ceiling illuminated faintly. You see about 15 people sitting on the dirty ground. Yes, this room is the same. So let's go back in. Into the room for a second time. Though I hadn't been away that long, everything seemed different. Okay. So we saved the girl again. Froze the moment I entered the room. It seemed some movement out of the corner of my eye. Then my head all I could see was a blank wall. Okay, so this room seems to be the same because we didn't do any intervention um, realistically in the first time that we went through. And then we saw the scene. So room two. It's Frederick's room. He said he'll give me the gun. We don't want the gun, we know it's empty. Hey, did you bring anything useful with you? I didn't even offer so much as agreeing. I don't have anything with me, sorry. Still, how incompetent can be? Don't come back until you've found something. The 
nobody did actually give them any food after this, but there were other innocent people in the need of help. I really wanted to help them. We're going to keep going back. We're going to see what happens. Hesitantly, I entered the room. I expected Frederick to jump towards me and demand to know whether I had any food with me. To my surprise, he didn't. He was nowhere to be seen. So another man, as if awoken from a trance, jumped up and stormed towards me. I tried to step out the way, but he almost tackled me and grabbed me by the collar. You! You have food and water. Give them to us! I struggled to get him off me, but he kept clinging on to me. His strength was surprising, considering how frail he looked. Let me go, I don't have any. Liar, you still look healthy, but you're keeping it all to yourself. I struggled with him, a pungent metallic stench hit my nose. I finally managed to throw him off me. His body hit the ground. He there for a bit, gasping in frustration. He crawled back to where he'd been sitting before attacking me. Catching my breath, I took a look around the room. The room was sitting in their own corner, eyes fixed on the ground. They looked more famished than the last time I'd seen them. Whereabouts of Frederick was also still a mystery to me. I approached a woman sitting in one of the four back corners of the room, but she averted her gaze as I asked her if she'd seen where he'd gone. He's not here anymore. That was all she was willing to tell me. I had no idea what happened here, and it didn't seem like I'd find out by asking them. Another wave of the pungent smell hit my nose and I took a few steps back. What was that? It almost made me gag. I wanted to spend any more time in here than necessary, I left the room. I felt really uneasy about entering this room. Was it because of the way everyone had acted last time I was here, or was it because of the smell? With a foul feeling in my stomach, I stepped over the threshold. An even worse stench than last time hit my face, stealing my breath and making my eyes tear up. So enough to make me want to vomit. I knew if I stayed here any longer, I would. I took a look around the room through my teary eyes. There were piles of something. While quickly covering my nose, I wiped away my watering eyes and took a closer look. There were big mountains of clothes scattered throughout the room. Some kind of insects were buzzing around them. There was also another big red pile. First I thought it was flesh, but when I got closer I realised it was mostly organs. I quickly stepped back towards the wall, but as I did, I almost stumbled over something. I let out a shout as I tried to regain my balance. I glanced at the floor to see what I had stepped on. The woman who was leaning on the wall, but her appearance was off. Her stomach was horribly bloated if it burst at any moment. Right next to her was a knife covered in blood. It didn't seem like she was killed with it as I didn't see any stab wounds on her. Instead, she was covered in many small bruises. Either way, she was undeniably dead, even if I couldn't make out why. The whole room was bizarre. Piles of clothes, a pile of organs, and a woman with a bloated stomach. What had happened here? I quickly came to the conclusion there was no use thinking about it. I wanted to get out of here as soon as possible. The stench was killing me. That's what it is, I finally stepped out of the room. Trying to force the horrible image of what I'd seen out of my mind, I decided to not enter that room again. I turned to the other doors and with a heavy heart contemplated what to do next. Enter the dimly lit room desolate except for a few cans of food and a few water bottles in one of the corners. There were also two rather young children, one boy and one girl in the middle of the room. As I saw the girl kneeling over the boy's motionless body, my heart dropped. It was Amy and Lammy. They looked up to me with pleading eyes as I rushed to the side. Lammy was covered in sweat, indicating a heavy feeder. <sighs> no. I just I did not know if what I had here was proper medicine, so I decided not to risk it. You need to have some food and water here. Do you think I should take some of it with me? Many people are trapped in here and they don't seem to have any. I don't mind. Thank you. You didn't seem very talkative. I to be expected how concerned about her brother she was me. I'll let you know once I find something and help, okay? Then back towards her brother. What about the canned food considering taking some with me? I'm not taking any this time. I'm not interfering with anyone. Decided against taking any. The room and found myself back in the hallway. What room should I go into? I'm sorry about those two. What kind of terrible scenarios popped into my head? I glanced around my room, they fortunately seemed to be more or less okay. I approached them. Amy was still huddled over Lanny's body, her face twisted with worry. Condition seemed to have worsened, which became more and more apparent as I got closer. Spots on his arms and limbs seemed to be bruised. Some kind of black ulcer, similar to blood, to grow out of some of them. I wasn't sure he would last much longer with that Edison. Amy looked up to me with sad eyes. I had some meds on me. At least that's what the woman gave it to me called it. I couldn't really read the label. No, if I had was proper medicine, so I decided not to risk it. If you get going again, I'll come back to check on you. Please don't take so long this time. Long? I hadn't been out for that long, but it was understandable. She didn't want to be left all alone. She was slightly exaggerating. I walked by the canned food and considering taking some with me. I decided against taking any. I left the room and found myself back in the hallway. I quickly made my way towards the middle room to find out whether the boy's condition had approved. 
I could tell already tell from a distance that even more wounds had opened up. On top of that, it was as if some mushroom-like plants were sprouting out of them. And we didn't look well either. She was just sitting next to him, sitting, staring into space. But she hadn't noticed me coming in. Hey, Amy, are you alright? Head barely moved in my direction. Scott? Almost as if she didn't really recognise me. I grew concerned. Yeah, it's me, Scott. Are you alright? She didn't reply. Maybe she was just tired. I couldn't blame her. The whole situation was pretty exhausting. Especially for someone as young as her. Where have you been? Her voice was almost inaudible. I was searching for a way out of here. Don't worry, I'm sure that I'll find one soon. She continued to stare at the floor with a blank expression. I just need some more time. Having your brother out of here soon. Okay? She turned away. And now she seemed like she was up for conversation. It's probably in her interest that I left and continued searching for an exit. I left her be. Walked by the canned food and considered taking some with me. Decided against taking any. I left the room and found myself back in the hallway. The door wouldn't budge at first. How did it get stuck? It was totally fine the last time I tried to enter it. I started pulling on it with all my might and eventually I was able to pry it open. What had blocked my attempt to enter the room with vines and mushrooms growing on the ground. Where had they come from? My question was quickly answered I pushed through them. Mamni's body seemed to be floating in the middle of the room. But I quickly realised it was just being supported by some of the vines. It looked like they'd sprouted out of it. How was this possible? Where was Amy? I couldn't see her anywhere. Amy, are you in here? Are you alright? No reply, she had to be. There was no way she could... I started around in a panic until I finally spotted her. It was Amy, but my heart sang into my stomach. There had been no way to escape the expanse of the vines. And she must have been entangled in them. And something slid down my cheek, but I barely knew it. I hadn't known them for long, but I still felt responsible. I was the chance to escape this hell, but I'd let them down. Shaking my head in disbelief, I stumbled backwards out of the room. The door fell shut in front of me. The horrible scene burned itself in my mind. I was on the verge of losing hope, but I said to myself and turned away from the door. Even if I wasn't able to save Amy and Lanny anymore, I might be able to help other people trapped in here. I shouldn't give up just yet. To postpone mourning their death until later. With a heavy heart, I went back into the middle of the hallway. So, this one will likely be exactly the same. Yeah, the dog's still here. And if I don't enter, will anything different happen? No. So if I don't do anything, everything goes to... Yup. Great. Um, let's try a different route, I guess. Um, let's try saving the child with the medicine, not finding the girl. Okay, that, that's what I think we're gonna do for this one. Um, room one has the medicine. Go give the medicine to Lammy. I'll take half the food. And I'll give half the food to room three. Uh, to room two. The door creaked open and lights filled into the room. A crowd of 40 people occupied the space. They were sitting on the floor and some were leaning against the dirty walls. Suddenly, someone near the door darted up and shoved me aside. It was Frederick, who I'd met only briefly while chatting with Sabrina. He had to force himself through the door but stopped mid air. Visible force was pulling him back. More people approached the door and tried the same but to no avail. Damn it! Frederick slammed his fist into the wall. I thought this was my chance. Straight he went back to where he was originally sitting. Since I'd been in a room like this before, I knew I was able to travel back and forth. Hey, um, a few of the people looked up as I started speaking. I should be able to walk in and out. There are also survivors in the other room. I might be able to get you something if you need anything specific. Frederick shot up and walked up to me until he was way too close for comfort. We need food, you'll get some for us, right? Sounding more like a threat than a request. Yeah, I can do it if I find some. So back so I didn't have to s smell his sour sweat anymore. If you happen to have anything in here you don't need, just in case the other people trapped on the ship need anything specific. Looks like we have just made a joke. What, no, even if we had anything, we wouldn't be just giving it away. I looked at him sceptically. Alright, alright, I know what you want. I have a gun with me. If you bring me food, I'll trade it for the gun. 
gun. I'd never used a firearm before and I'm not sure how a gun would help me in this situation. Hastily I agreed to escape Frederick's impatient gaze. Maybe it would come in handy after all. I have to make sure to share the food with the others. Give us something. Give them some food. Decided to give the food to Frederick. It's probably a good idea to have a weapon with me in case I run into something. I have some food with me and I can give it to you and you can share it with the others. Frederick took a quick look around just to make sure no one was looking. <sighs> okay. Let's see what happens. I glance around the room, the fortune seemed to be more or less okay. How's your brother feeling? Maybe it did seem to be much calmer. I think this is the one where they're still okay. Yeah, okay, so this one's the same. We've seen this. So let's go back into room two and just see if they follow the same path. You jumped up if you saw me come in. Here we had a deal, remember? And what are you talking about? Don't tell anyone about the food and I give you the gun. Don't be an ass and break our deal. Planted himself in front of me close enough for him to smell his sour sweat again. Gave me an unloaded gun so that deal wasn't legitimate to begin with. So I never said it was going to be loaded. But get out now. Clenched his right fist. I'm sure he would actually punch me if I said another word. Realising that I wouldn't get anything out of staying here, I stepped back into the hallway. Okay. So that room is different-ish. I was eager to see if the boy's condition had improved. I didn't think the medicine could have actually worked that quickly. His fever may have gone down a bit. But to my surprise, he was already up and about. Amy was leaning on the wall while Lanny was frantically running around knocking the walls. He didn't seem to have heard me come in. Don't think this is secret X anyway. You should probably save your energy till they come and save us. You know how long it's been already? If they wanted to save us, they would have done that forever ago. I bet I can find something. There has to be a way out of here. Faced by his sister's advice, he continued to search every inch of the wall. He seemed to finally spot me and jog towards me. Scott, did you manage to find a way out? Boyd turned around and hastily came closer as well. You're Scott. Amy told me you helped with the medicine. Thank you a lot. Don't worry about it. To answer your question, Amy, unfortunately not yet. Hope drained from the expectant eyes that said that. Wish I could have brought them good news. Never mind that. I'm surprised that you're better already, Lanny. Already? I don't think any sickness has ever kept me down longer than this one. I had to sleep through a whole week after you gave me the medicine. Huh? A week? Yeah, good thing we had enough food or water. It seemed like they were serious. I'm pretty sure it hadn't been that long since the last time we'd see them. Have you really been trapped here for a week? Yeah. That didn't make any sense. I was feeling so glad about Lenny, Lanny being alright again that I decided to postpone my questions about them. Getting them out as quickly as possible had to be top, top priority. So what about your parents? Were they with you two when the whole thing happened? No, they were somewhere on the ship but not in the same room as us. I can see, can you tell me what they look like? I can let them know you're safe if I meet them. They proceeded to give me a detailed description of the parents and I did my best to memorise everything. So you came as a group of six. You, your parents, Sabrina and Frederick, right? Yeah, and our dog came too. You probably recognise our dad pretty quickly. Bit odd since he always carries bullets with him as a lucky charm, but no actual gun. He always says. I don't think he needs to know. And he gave her an irritated look. I almost forgot. Did you meet a girl while looking around? She wears a hoodie and a skirt. The description sounded oddly familiar. Could they mean the girl I met on the ship deck? I hadn't seen her since yesterday, however. Can't say that I have. Here's shortly before you came. She was really nice and told us she'd find a way to help Lanny, but she never came back. I'm worried about her. I want to go home with mum and dad. Words are almost inaudible. Both me and Lanny picked it up. Don't worry, we'll get out of here soon. I felt really bad for him, but I wasn't sure what I could do to help. Staying here and lending them my company would be a way, and I couldn't search for a way to get them out. Maybe I could look for their family first and make sure they knew their children were safe. But I was afraid about how many days will have passed before I entered this room. Both times seemed to be peculiar in this place. I came to the conclusion that I had to keep on searching for a way out if I wanted to help them. Probably get to go now. I'll let your parents know you two are alright if I meet them. You two sit. Tie it and stick together until I come back, alright? Found to get you out by them, alright? Oh, and let us know if you find your dog. It's a Doberman with a red collar. Let you know if I see him. Alright, we know who's in this room. I 
go into one. Oh. Okay, save the girl. <laughs> Alright. Okay, so they're trying to get food again. What good would that do? I still haven't found an exit. I should use my time more efficiently. Okay. Yeah, so this is the original ending. That does the same thing. No. What do I do? I'm not sure what I can do. Oh. I didn't realize that was a menu. Can I not go back to check on the girl? We're gonna have to So that gives us the same ending, but we did save the girl, but if we have the information about the girl and about the dog and his parents. Um, okay, hear me out. Go to room one. We don't need to think of room three right now. We'll save the girl. We'll find out about the dog. Then we'll go to room three and we'll give them the medicine. We're not going to take any of the food. And we're going to see what happens. Okay, selling us what they look like. Did you meet a girl? Yes. Yeah, I think I have. She wasn't doing too well when I found her, but she's resting in my room now. She was here shortly before we came. She was really nice until she found a way to help Lani, but she never came back. I'm worried about her. It didn't sound nice when the man in the first room had described her. Maybe she just has a weakness for children. Yeah, no, this seems to be the same. <sighs> With that, I turned around and stepped outside. Okay. Can I not go into room 215? all the same. I had also noticed I had also noticed a woman earlier that looked similar to how the siblings had described their mother. Maybe I could give the food to her instead of Frederick. I dusted myself off and turned towards the other doors. Oh, okay. Is that what I'm supposed to do? 
I didn't take any of the food. Yeah, I did was empty the room, taking it. So, is room too soft locked? Oh. Yes, that guy. Okay. Yeah, I think um, I may have kind of soft luck this door. Alright. I don't think what we've done is correct. So we're gonna go back. I just overwrite my save accident. So we're going to have to quickly just skip this and then overwrite this again. <laughs> okay, so start with room three. See that Lammy is not well. I'm going to take half. Then I'm going to go to room one. And I'm going to see if there's anything different that's said here. The other people in the room lowered their heads, the hopes dashed in an instant. I wasn't sure what was going on, but it was evident they were in trouble. I quickly walked up to the older man. Hey, do you know what's going on here? No. We all woke up in this room and are unable to leave, but now it seems like you're stuck in here with us as well. My heart stopped for a second and panic slowly started to set in. Was I really trapped in here? Hastily walked to the door and stepped right through. Man stared at me with wide eyes. This means you, instead of the girl, might be able to help us. Right after we uttered those words, some of the people in the room lifted their head and looked at me. Some with this look of disbelief and some with hope in their eyes. But there was someone else on the ship who could enter and exit this room freely. What did she look like? So I had to explain and I soon realised the description fit someone I knew. Just like the girl I met in the day yesterday. She got in this mess as well. I asked her to help us, but she just laughed and left. It wasn't quite how I remembered her. It wasn't like I'd known her for a long time. It was a nice appearance, just an act. She lifted her attention to the man back before me. There are more people trapped behind the do other doors. Please let me know if you have something you don't need or need to something. That way you can make sure everyone gets out of here safely. Some people nodded in agreement while the majority stayed stoic. One got up and got something from a shelf and approached me. I found some medicine in this room. Can't give away all of it, but maybe it'll help. I do have food on me. Should I give it to them? Yeah, I have some cans with me. It's not much, but it should help you keep going for a bit. His eyes lit up. He thanked me vigorously. I couldn't help but smile. I felt like I'd given some of the hope back that they had lost. All right, I should head back. I should head out. I'll let you know if I find anything. Those words, I stepped back through the door. It was behind me as if a wind gust had slowly, suddenly blown into the doorway. Now we give Lammy the medicine. Okay. Take on. Okay. Room one, what's gonna be different? Enter the room for a second time. Even though I hadn't been away that long, everything seemed different. Faces of the people here are dark and considerably. I approached the old man that I had to talk to not long ago and approached him. I didn't even look up as I greeted him. Just sat there with a blank expression, not moving in his face, no response. As I looked, I noticed some of the others had moved from the spot, nor had any of them looked up as I entered the room. I had thoughts and really wouldn't respond. I had shaken them awake, but they didn't react. Hello, can anyone hear me? I cried out into the room in desperation, but my words echoed back emptily. What's going on? What happened to them? Even though I was surrounded by people, I felt alone. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. I've got a really bad feeling that we need to leave the medicine there for her. So I'm going to try that. It does mean we won't be able to save Lamy though. Unless, what if we give the mother the food? Let's see what happens if we just take the dog route. We leave everyone else alone, we do not affect anything. I don't know, I don't think there's a good fruit here. Maybe she needs the medicine. But if we give him the medicine... And we take half of the food... Save the girl. This room, done. I don't think there's any, any new, new words here. Um, go into room two. Room three. Mommy's feeling better. Okay, told us a lot about his mum. So now when we go into room two, we should recognize the mum. I also notices a woman earlier that looks similar to how the siblings had described their mother. Should I give the food to her? Yes. Sorry, I don't have anything. He quickly walked past Frederick and approached the woman. Frederick sat down, frustrated, clenching his fists angrily. Hey, are you by any chance the mother of Amy and Lanny? Her eyes shut open. Have you seen them? Are they okay? Yes, they're all right. And they have enough food and water to survive for quite a while. Oh, thank God. She looked very relieved, but I knew she wouldn't be able to fully stop worrying about them until they were back together. I quickly looked around to make sure Frederick wasn't looking our way. And I got the cans of food out and held them to her. Here, this should help you get by for some time. She looked a bit confused, but happily took the cans and hid them under her mantle. Sure you wouldn't rather trade the food for his gun? She pointed at Frederick, but I shook my head. No, I'd rather let you have the food. I'm not sure if I can trust him to share it properly. All right, but take this with you. He held up something shiny from the mantle and handed it to me. It was a knife. Probably not as quite as useful as the gun. It's better than nothing. It may help you. Hesitantly took it and put it away. Thank you. I'll make sure to let you and everyone else know once I've found the way out. With that, I bid my farewell and worked towards the exit. But before I could step out of the door, I was rudely confronted by Frederick. Hey, what did you two talk about? Nothing. I really didn't feel like dealing with him, so I turned around and kept walking towards the door. He forcefully grabbed my arm, preventing me from leaving. Don't try anything funny, all right? Pulled my arm free and quickly made my way out before he grabbed me again. I really didn't want to, have to deal with him again. The door fell shut behind me and I let my eyes wander over the other doors. One I can't help anymore. I could attack it with the knife that I got from the sibling's mother. I don't want to do this. So the approach the creature, the knife felt heavy in my hand. I strengthened my resolve and then I lunged towards the dog. Closed my eyes at the last moment. A sharp sting behind my hand and jumped back. The dog managed to lightly injure me. Now that it tasted blood, it seemed to chain on the, it took on the chain even more furiously. 
hold my hand back quickly enough I only sustained a small scratch. The dog on the other hand seemed to have dodged my strike effortlessly. Fear of losing one of my fingers, I discarded the knife idea for now. Couldn't think of a way to get around the dog without getting mauled. So I decided to retreat and look for a way past it without getting myself in danger. I didn't feel like coming close to it, there has to be a safer way. Couldn't think of a way to get around the dog without getting mauled. Okay, so I don't check on the kids. I heard a big ruckus coming from behind the door if I opened it. They startled me and I almost slammed the door shut. And the worst happened. <sighs> Bit of what I've seen in that room. Okay, so I need this knife. I also need to heal Lammy. <sighs> Alright. So, we'll only go into room one once. To get the medicine for Lammy. Who will then tell us about his mother. who I will give the food to. Go into room one. So I have a knife. Okay, so she, she's gonna sleep. I have a knife. Is that gonna change anything? I don't know if it's going to change anything. As they come towards me, am I going to be able to, to fight back with the knife? They're dead. Kicks me out. Can't check on them. I've got a knife, but I can't do anything with it. against it after all and in the end I couldn't think of any way to get around it. Okay. Now that I have a knife, is there any difference? Now 
Now his weak and almost unable to move, the knife might actually be a valid option this time. The monster looked up as I got closer, glaring at the knife in my hands with hateful eyes. I was afraid. I knew that I had to do this to get past it. As I got closer, it started to writhe, almost as if it was trying to escape me. Once I stood right next to it, it once again tried to snap at me. I disputed why I sh should I try and get past it without killing it, but the risk was too big. If I was to be bitten here, the wound could easily get infected. The dog could also have a disease like rabies. Cautiously approached it and readied my weapon. At the last moment, I instinctively closed my eyes. As I felt the knife touch his body, I quickly jumped back. The knife almost tumbled out of my grip. Over my eyes, I could see my aim had been off. I'd only managed to scratch it back and still felt terrible. It became even more furious as it intensified its attempt to bite me. This time, I had to deliver a final strike. I wanted to get this over with as quickly as possible. I didn't want it to suffer anymore. Naming its neck, the red collar it was wearing staring back at me. I readied myself and again, I'd instinctively closed my eyes at the last moment. When I opened my eyes, I saw the creature stir back at me. It stopped barking. Where I'd aimed with its knife, there was no blood I missed. Not to be exact, I had hit the wrong target instead of the dog. I had cut its collar and it was free. I quickly brought up my hands to my face as the dog lunged at me. My feet entangled, I fell backwards. I was forced out of my lungs as my back hit the ground and the dog stepped on my stomach. If I hadn't been such a coward and hadn't closed my eyes, I would not be getting more by a dog. I ready myself for the oncoming attack when nothing happened. So I opened my eyes. The dog had already stepped off my body and was running towards the hallway. If I hadn't attacked me, did it think I'd freed it on purpose? Either way, I was happy I was still unharmed. As I looked to the ground of where the dog had previously been, I noticed something had been left behind. It was the dog's collar. Something had been attached to the inner side. A key. No idea what the key was for, but I decided to take it with me. Make him in handy. Later, cautiously I walked towards the hall. I glanced back to confirm the dog wasn't about to come back and attack me after all, but it seemed to really be gone. I stared into the hall. The hall stared back. Before I let the others know, I had to make sure it was on the other side was safe. I have all three keys. I guess that's really it. So, thanks to Lanny's mum, not only is he alive, she isn't, but she gave us the knife that allowed us to get the final key. I don't know what this key is for. I don't know what difference it'll make in the end. But there's one playthrough where I've got two keys. One playthrough where I've got three keys. And next time I'm going to play both of them to find out. If you want to see that and you did enjoy this video, please do like, please do subscribe, turn on the notification bell and leave a comment if you have something to say. I'm proud of you for getting through today. I'm even more proud of you for getting through tomorrow. Arvida San, Arrivederci, Good Assurus, Alawego. Peace. See you on the next one. Bye. I'd like to say a huge thank you to my real patrons. My tier three supporter, Hansel Panda. My tier two patron supporter, Suki SJ. And my tier one patron supporter, Danny. Your support allows me to make content as regularly as I do and I am so grateful. If you would like to join the Royal Patrons, there is a link down below in the description. Thank you so much for everything you do for me.